Hello and welcome everyone to Press B to Cancel. My name is Guy Prime, and with me today we have our usual dais of rapscallions. Uh, to my left is Werewolf. Say hello, Werewolf. Hello, Werewolf. Apt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also with me today is Sick Jake. Hey everybody, glad to be here. And of course, Pulch 109. Whatever happened to Pulch 108? Never mind. Yeah, the less we, we know, had to let him go. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of turnover in the Pulse departments. There can be only one. <laughs> there can be only, yeah. Pulse, Pulse is the equivalent title to Highlander if you're Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's a worldwide sensation. I'm sorry. Everybody in every country loves Highlander. That's true. That's true. Okay. All right. So today uh, we're going to be discussing. Kind of a variety. It's a little bit of a different uh, show tonight. Typically, we just take one game or one series and we discuss our experiences, our likes or dislikes. Tonight, we're going a little bit different. Uh, the title of the episode, tentatively, was called The Good, The Bad, and The Fugly. Um, if you don't know what fugly means, have one of your ugly friends explain it to you. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, So essentially, the, the idea of this episode is that we can all acknowledge the great games. They look good, they play good, the sound is great, and we can all acknowledge the crap games. They look horrible, they sound horrible, there are no redeeming qualities. So tonight we're discussing the ones, the games in between. Games that either look gorgeous, but are otherwise devoid of anything meaningful, we will call those Travoltas, or uh, the ugly games that have a lot of heart. We're going to call those Quasimodos, okay? So those are the two categories today. I'm going to start us off, and then we'll discuss uh, and, you know, go around the table as we always do. But we're going to start off with the ugly but great or Quasimodo category. Um, and I'll tell you what, guys, let's just go through different uh, video game systems. We'll start with the 8-bit video games. Uh, for me, it's NES, which is going to be Bionic Commando. Okay, so I love this game. I played it on stream recently, and I'm always reminded about how much I love it. But truthfully, the color palette is obnoxious. There's not the greatest animations between your character or the bad guys that you're trying to kill. And it's repetitive as hell. So that's kind of the idea here. Let's talk about Bionic Commando. And if you guys agree, let me know. If you disagree, let's have that conversation. Werewolf, what do you think? You know... I've actually not played a lot of Bionic Commando. I think the last time I played it was, gosh, I was seven years old. So almost 30 years ago. Good grief. So I, I can't say much to it. But I can say that from what I've seen people play on Twitch recently, it's not a pretty game. But I do see a lot of people playing it on Twitch recently. So that must be some, some, attest, uh, some testament to its uh, quality. Sure, yeah, okay. So it's a popular enough game. It's not always the, the best to look at. So if you're going to watch Bionic Commando... Have a beer or two first. <laughs> <laughs> have a beer or two first. Good God. Yeah, beer yeah, goggles only off. enhance it. All right. Okay. Uh, Sick Jake, uh, Paul, what, what do you guys think about Bionic Commando? Are we going Sick Are we going sick Paul or Jake109? Who's going first? We, we merge together. We okay. are one. <laughs> Yeah, give us that sexy fusion voice. Yeah, that Trunks fusion voice. Uh, yes. Go Tanks. Uh, 9,000. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Sorry, guys. Right, we'll, go with, we'll go with Jake first. Jake, uh, what do you think about Bionic Commando? So Bionic Commando, I played this quite a bit as a kid. And I'm just trying to struggle. How much variety was there in the enemies? Uh, well, as far as the enemy sprite goes... All of your entry level guys were pretty much the same. There were maybe one or two like right. boulder throwers or you know rocket launcher guys, but otherwise, yeah, all the same. Yeah, like none of them stand out to me in hindsight when I kind of think back to that game. Uh, I don't remember anything notable graphic wise. I remember that I remember the bad color palette, like you mentioned for sure. It's poor choice there. All I really remember about graphics is the main character. As a kid, I thought he was like a, a Doc Ock ripoff with that weird mechanical arm that's all i got from that game graphic wise nothing memorable at all i didn't care for it gameplay wise it was actually quite fun i mean mechanics were solid 
Right. Yeah. And I think that's exactly right. I think the biggest mechanic or the biggest saving grace to this game would be the mechanics. No jumping, just extendo arm. And also, I to me, I love the sounds. This is, for me, one of the rare games where the, not just the soundtrack, but the 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 noises of the game were so perfect. And for me, they invoke such a strong nostalgia. But, I mean, yeah, that's I think that's exactly kind of the heart of what um, the category is. So, Paul, what do you think about Bionic Commando? Yeah, I, it's pretty much the same as uh, Jake. It's like, I don't remember a lot, but the things I do remember, they're, they're kind of stuck in my brain. Like, I remember not being able to jump and always wanting to swing like Spider-Man, basically. <laughs> Ever since then, I was like, yeah, I want to do this. I remember playing the game and I'm thinking, this is so cool. But I never thought it was amazingly good looking. I just thought that was the coolest idea. So that I think, sure. yeah, looks-wise, no. But, you know, gameplay-wise, I thought it was fun. So I agree with it yeah, completely. It's, it's got that heart, that addictive quality that after you leave the game, like if you haven't beaten it, you know, you're, you're wanting to go back and continue or, you know, just pick up where you left off. Yeah. Um, now, I'll say this. I, I don't have this for every category, but the 8-bit ugly but great category, I have an alternate or a, an honorable mention. And I'll say this real quick. Um, Final Fantasy. The original 8-bit <laughs> Final Fantasy, not a pretty game. But damn it all, it's not amazing. Yeah, I know. No, no, no. You guys know I love Final Fantasy. Uh, and it was great for, for what it was and what it sparked. But going back, it is, it is dated. <laughs> yeah, those those tiny backgrounds in battle with just <laughs> four characters in a box and a little background, and then the rest of it's black. I, yeah, well, it's a, it's a sexy older sister. I guess technically the sexy younger sister of Oregon Trail. Ouch. <laughs> I mean, the game was based on D and D, so <laughs> it was leaps and bounds from pen and paper numbers but <laughs> they still hadn't found their visual groove yet by any means <laughs> yeah. uh, well okay yeah, of course yeah. but the enemy sprites and the boss sprites in that game were extremely detailed and there's a lot of variety in the monsters you face because i thought about this game as well for my list and i didn't do it because of the variety of monsters and the graphics and the sprites yeah okay see i could definitely concede to that um, but, you know, to the point of it was inspired by or trying to uh, invoke um, D&D, &D, that's a great point because D&D &D requires a lot of good imagination to fill in the gaps visually. And I think that is the point to Final Fantasy that I'm trying to make is there's some cool ideas there, but with the limited motion and animation, you really have to use your, you know, theater of the mind, as it were, to, uh, to fill in those, those gaps. That's pixel art in a nutshell for me, so I, I agree. But you can get some effing cool pixel art. That said, okay, I oh, no doubt. No, that's good. Actually, Paul, um, let, let's go to your, what's your Quasimodo game? The ugly but great game. This one stuck out to me, and just because it, I always felt like it looked like an Atari game to me, kind of, that met, that made it with an NES game, and it still had kind of elements of mostly Atari. Uh, a boy in his blob. Because the graphics weren't really great, but the whole premise, this game was hard. I, I still won't touch it because I'm just, I don't, I'm f the fear of failure. But the fact that you could, you know, give them like 40 different jelly beans and have all these different things, like you could turn your blob into a trampoline or a ladder or a friggin' rocket, <laughs> you know, it was, it was really cool, but the graphics didn't keep up. But I thought, considering how ugly it was it still was pretty fun and so that's that's just what stuck out for me yeah i i i own a boy and his blob and i have started a boy and his blob but i think the graphics and i hate to say it this way because it makes me sound so shallow but uh, i think the graphics have prevented me from really getting into it so i think that's that's a bit of a home run for choice there but i, I can't speak to the greatness of the game just to the uh just to the ugliness. As far as the sprite quality and, you know, the image quality in general, yeah, it, everything is... <laughs> the design choices as far as the characters, they're very ugly. Yeah. There's not a lot of detail. However, they're really smoothly animated for how ugly they are. 
which I always found kind of odd. Yeah, and I think that's part of it, too, because they ended up... It was so simplistic, I think they ended up getting a little bit more leeway when it came to animating them. Yeah, but yeah, that that game is definitely a favorite of mine. I had that growing up. I don't know what happened to my copy. I don't remember getting rid of it, but I don't know if it got lost in a move or I did eventually trade it in or something. That is a game I put far too many hours into as a child. Oh my goodness. Like... I I can probably still remember what most of the jelly beans do. That's how much I played it. Ketchup. Uh, ketchup hole? Yes. <laughs> There's licorice ladder, root beer rocket. I had a root beer rocket once. <laughs> <laughs> I think I agree with GP on the, um, in terms of the graphics is what probably turned me off from the game as well. I didn't really finish it. I spent... I made it to the off-world section, and that was interesting. But you spend the majority of your time underground, and there's such a limited palette of colors down there. It's all brown and black. Oh, and yeah. I found it extremely dull. Yeah. Their their color choices definitely reflected what they went back to in the early 2000s, just with less bloom. Right. Yeah. Well, Jake, what uh, what game do you have for us? Ugly, but lovable for the 8-bit. Well, I mean, I mean, some guys know me. If I'm not complaining about a game, I'm not, I don't like it. And the one game I complain about all the time is R-Type for the Master System. And <laughs> this game is brutally hard for me. It took me forever to beat it, and I had to use a a continue code to do it. Uh, it's great. The gameplay is classic to me. The bosses are awesome. There's also a mechanic where if you don't beat the bosses fast enough, they take away from you. There's you know upgrades. It's a great game. Ported on literally everything. But the Master System 1 is the one I played the most. But the thing that makes it ugly is there's slowdown constantly. There's flickering every other level. There's one level, I want to say it's the third one, where the background is this organic pulsing like red color. But that's fine. But the enemy shots are also red. So because of the poor choice in colors of the background, the enemy bullets, you can't see where the bullets are half the time in addition to all the flickering. So like the graphics are just terrible, terrible. I've seen this game in arcades, and it looks 10 times better. Uh, it's a shame, because it's a fantastic game, gameplay. It it's, plays well for me on any system. I know it for the Master System, and I love it there, but the graphics on that system just can't keep up. Gotcha. Okay. So I hear you saying that you've only beaten it with the continue code. So what you mean is you've never beaten it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just a little, little, little bit of shade. If we're sure, throwing shade sure. at games, how to do it shade each other. Oh. You know what? Point taken. Shots fired. That one landed. <laughs> that one landed hard. Sick burn. Sick burn. <laughs> uh, Wolf, what do you got for us for uh, ugly? Oh well, no, I'm sorry. Let's not do that yet. Uh, Pulsion Werewolf. What do you guys think about our type? Um, uh, I've never been a fan of shoot 'em ups or bullet hells, so our type was one I didn't really get into. They kind of just blend together for me. Not that I'm saying it was a bad game or anything, but uh, I can't tell the difference between R-Type and Gradius. And anybody who's a shoot 'em up fan right now is probably wanting to strangle me. So I apologize, but <laughs> either way. Honestly, you're not wrong. There are very few shooters that pull me in. Yeah, I'm with you. I think the only one that really has stood out for me uh, was like Life Force. And that's... That's really the only one I paid attention to. I'm, I'm kind of like you guys with that. So I will have to take Sick Jake's word on this one. Yeah. But uh, I, I believe him. Especially, I mean, yeah, I've never heard of anything like that where the bullets are the same color as the background. Obviously, that is a horrible design choice. <laughs> that's, a, that's a controller thrower right there. Yeah. <laughs> that ends up being NES hard. It's, it belongs in NES hard, but different system. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. It's like a master system okay. hard. Doesn't have the same ring to it. Doesn't roll off the tongue as much. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Wolf, what do you got for us on your uh, quasi game? The game that everybody is familiar with, the Ninja for Master System. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this game, the gameplay is an absolute blast. You're running around, you're throwing shurikens at people, you get upgrades to your stuff, like movement upgrades, weapon upgrades, special attacks, all sorts of crap. The enemies, 
There's all sorts of enemy types. They have different AIs. The levels get mixed up. Some are like a lot of them are just, you know, go from the bottom, scroll upward. Occasionally it's like scroll from right to left, but they've got like the river level where you're trying to move from log to log and kill enemies before they get you, stuff like that. They did a lot of creative things with the game, but boy did it not look good at all like there were a lot of sprites and they were a lot of ugly pixels the the colors like they use really bright colors they're eye-catching colors but there's so much of one color that covers the screen at a time that it just it fries your eyeballs a little bit that that bright neon green grass (laughs) <laughs> yeah everything looks green afterwards it's like you're wearing you must be wearing like sun, like tinted sunglasses afterwards you're just like uh yeah there's there's almost there's really very little detail on any of the locations in the game you got to use your imagination a lot but that game is so much fun and it's it's a hard one so it it's one of those ones that's like punishing and you want to go back. <laughs> I didn't even know that was for Master System. The first time I actually played it was on like a bootleg 31 and one NES card. And I had no idea that this was bootleg up until like a few years ago. So I was like, oh, this is amazing. Oh, never mind. It's funny interesting that you also picked a Master System game. Do you think it's something to do with that system and that just couldn't put out the solid graphic power to to handle those games? Because there's a few other games that are also not that great graphic-wise. No, because there are some actually really pretty Master System games too. The The Master System graphically had superior capabilities to the NES, but you have to remember there were a lot more companies pumping games out on the NES. It's like, it's it was the platform that was supported versus the platform that wasn't. It doesn't matter right. how much power it has if people don't know how to make use of it. Like I'm just thinking of the Sonic games, and some of them are really terrible. The slowdown is ridiculous. Lots of flickering. Like it is, it's disappointing because there are great games on the system. It's one of my favorite systems. Well, the Master System, the Master System is just a Game Gear. It's it's a Game Gear fit to TV resolution, or rather, the Game Gear is a Master System fit to a smaller resolution. They're they're the exact same architecture. <laughs> That's why all the emulators run both of them. Interesting. Okay, okay. So that's our that's our time for eight bit games. Let's move on to sixteen bit. If you guys are ready for that, is that good? Sure, I'm ready. Sure. Holy cow! <laughs> is that is that claw? Yeah, we'll we'll call it that. Next okay. time, eight <laughs> bit. Next yeah. time. <laughs> this is one of those rare occasions where I wish I had worn pants now. Now I feel <laughs> awkward. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, Wolf, let's start with you. Uh, 16-bit, ugly but great. What are you thinking? Uh, Stunt race effects. Yeah, it, I agree. It was not that a pretty game. That is absolutely good. <laughs> it, <laughs> this... <laughs> it, it, it had a lot of character in the graphics, but it was not pretty at all. The For whatever reason, I, I'm pretty sure those, uh, oh, what is that, gas that gas station with the Chevron. Pretty sure those Chevron cars were inspired by this game. <laughs> but, or vice versa. But is it uh, good? Yeah, I, I, you know what? They dropped it on the Switch this week, and I went back and played it, and I had so much fun with it. Oh my goodness! It, it, it was a lot of fun, and I used to play it a lot two player. Which I mean, you can play two player races against the AI as well which is pretty taxing on a Super Nintendo, which <laughs> I'm pretty sure that killed the frame rate big time, so it made it even uglier. It was still somehow playable, and it was a lot of fun. I really, really enjoy that one. Yeah, I was going to say, the only time I saw frame rate that bad post Mario Kart on the Switch was after watching Stunt Race FX. Like, it's like 3 FPS. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> you know, that that brings up... I mean, we'll have to see how the rest of the show plays out. But I've had in the back of my mind like this big question mark of of the two categories today, how many sports games or how many racing games ultimately are going to be referenced. So we're going to chuck that down as, the, you know, the first one, I suppose, for uh, for racing. But that's, that's interesting to me. I think that's a good pick. Absolutely. But I'm, I'm glad you chose that because while that was on my short list of like five games, 
I was so hesitant to, to pull out a, a racing game or a sport-themed game because uh, those really didn't hit their stride until you know much later. But uh, I like that one. Paul, what, what, do, what do you got for us on 16-bit? Mine is pretty much the 16-bit argument all over again from from 8-bit. I've got a game that was hard, <laughs> that I loved, but the same kind of problem, Lemmings. And I hate saying it because... <laughs> Lemmings yeah. look terrible. I mean, but they're, you know, like they're like six pixels each, you know, so you can't really complain too much. <laughs> but the idea behind it, again, was so cool. Like you could make one guy stop everybody else. Another one would start digging. Another one would start digging upwards and whatever. So the game itself was just great. The music is probably one of the top five for like Super Nintendo for me for, for soundtracks. But I just remember... And it never bothered me about the graphics. I'm just saying it just, they, you know, they don't look great. I, I tell you what I appreciate here is, uh, forgive me for saying it this way, the shame in your voice when you said <laughs> lemmings. I, it, oh, it's, it's, yeah. almost, it's, it's almost like, you know, it's 3 a.m., I've had a few drinks, I'm lonely, I'm going to call lemmings <laughs> and not tell anybody about it <laughs> the next day. So I love that. See, that's why I love this, this idea for the, for the episode. You sneaky that, rap scallion. Oh, yeah, you got me good. But no, I love that. I think that's a great choice. And I think we've all done that with uh, either Lemmings or a game like Lemmings, where you're like, ah, I just want to want to sate my appetite, but I'm not proud of it. Let's let's play Lemmings. Yeah. That's good. What do, what do you guys think about Lemmings? That's actually another game where, despite the ugliness of the palette and you know, the little tiny characters that you could barely make out, they were really smoothly animated and they conveyed yeah. a lot of information with what, 15 pixels. Yeah. yeah you could tell what they were doing. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Yeah. So they, they definitely went for function over form. And the, I think they succeeded. So, I mean, that's that's saying something. Oh yeah, it, it's it's a great game. It, 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 it's that argument again. It's got a great personality. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. The backgrounds. Okay. Granted, not all the backgrounds are your hot redhead. Okay. But a lot of them look fine to me. There's one I played on the Genesis, so it's 16 bit, and the one level or there's a couple levels with the forest theme. I thought that looked amazing. And the fact that you could dig through the leaves of the tree and everything looked great to me. Yeah, I can, I can see your point there. Plus, the intro was funny. I thought the intro was well animated as well. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I like Wolf said, six intro. pixels, what are you going to do, right? There's only so much you can do with six pixels <laughs> on a character. And now you see why I feel guilty even saying it, because it's like there's so much charm to this game and considering what they've done with it. so. No, I, I think it's a great game that um, conveys exactly what it needed to. But you're right, there's not much... Uh, frill to it outside of like visually it's not arresting in a positive way yeah it's not something that ever made me stop and look when I saw it on a screen anywhere but playing it I could not put it down yeah it's a game you play in your own home like if you had gone to <laughs> Walmart and uh, they had that on the display you'd be like not here lemmings we can know each other but nobody can know we know each other <laughs> I'm going to sound like a jerk for this entire episode. <laughs> Just you wait. I'll get you back. Nice. Okay. Uh, all right. So Paul 109 with uh, Lemmings. Uh, Sick Jake, what do you got for us? 16-bit. A 16-bit. So you mentioned earlier about racing games, and this is technically a racing game. It's Uniracers for the SNES. Oh, man. I forgot about that. So I don't know if you guys have played this game before. Was have that Unicycles? It? Yeah, it was like yes. Unicycles without was, riders. Okay. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. It's the weirdest concept for a video game I've seen in a while. Um, but I love the hell of this game. I got it at a used store for like 10 bucks. Graphic wise, literally, you, just, you guys said it. You're just a unicycle, no rider. And the tracks are basically this candy stripe, you know, line that loops around and goes left to right. There's not much going on graphic wise. But gameplay wise, the trick system in it, there's like a dozen different tricks you can do with your, your bike. You know, flips and, and cartwheels, all kinds of crazy stuff. And you need to do those tricks in order to build speed and momentum. And you kind of get tied up in the different modes. Like some of the modes are focused on doing the stunts. And other ones are about speed. Some are just like, you know, marathon and length. There's a lot of variety and tracks in the game. It, the gameplay is outstanding. The only problem is it's a lot of them look the same. 
the precursor to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. In a lot of yeah, ways, yeah. Now that now that you mention it, yeah, that game did a ton of stuff for being a two D side on racing game. Yeah, Jeez. but I, I think when you can make the argument that if Marble Madness makes you look like a chump, <laughs> then okay, you know, yeah, marbles I, ain't I, no backflipping. Well, they might be, but you can't tell because they're spherical. <laughs> <laughs> There's just no way of knowing. No, I think that's a good. And you're right. Like that, that's that's the kind of racing thing as well. So that's that's interesting. I, I remember the game. I don't remember much of playing it though, but I, I can see it in my mind. And I, yeah, I agree. I think that's a good good entry. What do you guys think? I would agree that that game was not a whole lot to look at. Like it was cleanly animated. But there was, is literally, you know, the track is just a candy striped bar on the ground that moves around. And then you're a unicycle, no character on the unicycle. You're just a unicycle doing stunts and tricks and jumps and bouncing around and zooming along. So it it was, it was a limited presentation type of game, I, I would say. Yeah, but Werewolf, the way that you just described it, like the, you're a unicycle going around doing tricks and bumps and jumps and all. I, if you said that to me, I would actually I would want to pick that up. The way you just presented that actually had me interested. I'm like, oh, shit, maybe I should play this again. It was an absolute blast. It really was. I played the crap out of it. <laughs> that's good. I mean, that's that's the heart and soul of this uh, this category. So that's good. Um, I'll, I'll jump in now with my 16 bit. I was torn between two. So I'm going to pick the little, uh, the one that's a little bit more controversial, just because it'll be a better discussion. But I was thinking about doing Star Fox, but I think we can all agree <laughs> it did not age well. It was not great, but it's a fun game. I know Sick Jake loves it. <laughs> but what I'm going to, yeah, what I'm going to, what I'm, what I'm going to officially state is the original Mortal Kombat. Now, I love most Mortal Kombats, you know, in, in the series. But if you look at the first Mortal Kombat, and when I first played that, I, I played it around the same time as uh, Street Fighter 2. So comparatively, Street Fighter 2, crisper, cleaner, brighter, smoother. And to me, Mortal Kombat, though I enjoy it, the first one was very clunky. You hear how and he's stressing that he has for... to, though I enjoyed it. You know, he's, he's doing what <laughs> well, I did. That's right, because I, well, there's there's points coming in later, Paul. <laughs> uh, there, Mortal Kombat will make other entries uh, in the future, I, you know, starting with Mortal Kombat 2, great franchise. And if you look at this uh, disparity between uh, how poorly the first one looks and plays compared to MK2, that's kind of the crux of my argument for Mortal Kombat. If they had ended the Mortal Kombat series with the first one, it wouldn't have made the list. But out of all of it, yes, MK1, not that great, in my opinion. Fun to play, but just pretty ugly. You know what? I can get beyond that. I thought it was really cool to see Street Fighter 2 and had all the way smoother animations and stuff. But I mean, they weren't taking, you know, real life models and trying to digitize them. So the the motions and the animations were so much more fluid because you're working with a cartoon versus real life. So it, it, it was fun. Don't get me wrong, but, you know, I thought it looked pretty bad. Yeah, it, it's the video game equivalent to Spawn, the live-action movie. Yeah. The one with John Leg uh, John Leguizamo. <laughs> yeah, it didn't necessarily look that great. Also, some of the acting was hit or miss. But uh, in the end, there's something about it that I still love. But uh, yeah, well, what do you think about that? Mortal Kombat, ugly but great, or just a game? What do you think? I think it's just a game. I was never drawn into Mortal Kombat like all my friends were. I... I mean, I was in the initial rush of it. Yeah, I was like, oh, my gosh, they're just brutally bashing each other's skulls in and there's blood and oh, man. But at the end of the day, I was still kind of like, well, Street Fighter is more fun and prettier. I'm kind of over this. (laughs) I granted my experience with it was a neighborhood full of kids who had the Genesis. So it was even more limited than the Super Nintendo one. So I, I'm kind of colored by that memory. Everybody I knew had it for Genesis because, of course, more blood. Right. Yeah. OK. OK. Jake, how about you? Oh, man, I hate to scream with you guys on every game. But <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad. OK, look, you're right. Street Fighter is definitely it's a, hot garbage. A say it. Say it. Game. <laughs> but it's not it's not 
lukewarm garbage at best. Okay. okay? <laughs> if Five you're seconds argument, in the microwave. Bring and it's, on it's the okay. garbage. <laughs> if your argument against me here is it's not that bad. <laughs> okay. Then it's kind of that bad. <laughs> yeah. All right. The color palette is a bit limited. I give you that. But the digitized actors was revolutionary, and they looked pretty good. In fact, I wonder if you compared the frames of animation in Mortal Kombat versus Street Fighter. I bet you that they have the same frames. The only difference is it's not as colorful. And, like, you're right when you mentioned the later entries of the series. They kind of expand on that. Uh, Mortal Kombat 3 is one of my favorite fighting games, and the color palette there is amazing. But just watching Kano, that Rapscallion thrusting his fist in somebody's chest and pulling out their beating heart... That looked great. I thought that was hilarious. It was, it was good looking to me at the time. I liked the look of the game. I also love Sub Zero. I'm Team Sub Zero. I will be for life. I thought the sprites and, and the characters were well done. I'll agree, Street Fighter looks better, but I think Mortal Kombat is not as bad as you think it is. It's no Clay Fighter, put it that way. <laughs> okay. Basically, <laughs> Jake feels like Goro when he got punched in the nuts in the first movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And the rest of us feel like Johnny Cage. <laughs> yeah. Those are $500 <laughs> glasses. Glasses, asshole. <laughs> glass this, glass hole. This is before or after the vasectomy. I'm leaving that one in there. <laughs> yeah, glass hole for the win. Okay. I like that. Okay, so um, next is going to be the 32-bit category. Um, let's start with Paul. Tell me something. Wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's, uh, let's clarify. This This tier is 32 slash 64 bit. Because we're yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, it's the same generation. Oh, so so we can switch it up. Okay, so I'm gonna name a game, and I'm gonna tell you guys what the game, and I want you to tell me if you think that I think it's ugly but amazing, or if I think it's terrible but beautiful. Okay. Okay. Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Okay, if you don't think that's a pretty game, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trolling. I was hoping, I was waiting for more of a rant. <laughs> See, I was in on that one, so. <laughs> Otherwise, I probably would have laid into Paul's. What the fuck oh, is yeah. wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. No, that, that one I can't say anything bad about. So, anyways, that's the joke. So, anyways, continue forward. No, now you have to give us a real game. <laughs> Yeah, Ugly But Beautiful, 32 or 64 bit. Go ahead. Doom 64. Okay. Okay, tell us about that. Why Why? Why do you hate that game so much? It looked great. I remember seeing magazine ads. I remember playing it. Or not playing it, wanting to play it. And then finally I went out on vacation, came back, and I had a copy of it in my hand. I was like, it was this or Duke Nukem 64. I was already playing Duke Nukem 64. I was like, okay, so I need something new for me and my friends so we can just lay into this game. And I tried it, and I was like, this looks so cool. And then I realized, it's like, this game is crap. <laughs> I was so disappointed with it. It it, it moved well. Like, the graphics looked great. Um, but it, other than that, it just felt like a little bit better version of Doom to me. Like, and I can't play the original Doom anymore. I give it headaches just from the motion. So it looked better, but I was disappointed because I thought it was, you know, the 64 and it just meant it was 464 and I thought it was going to be the actual Doom with better graphics. No, it was completely different. Like they made their own game and I was just, I wasn't ready for that disappointment. You've, you've given me a bit of a revelation here and agree or disagree, but let me know. Would you say... No. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. No. Would you say that video game commercials and box art and descriptions were the back-in-the-day preteen equivalent to Tinder profiles? <laughs> <laughs> Never thought about it now. Yeah. They show up and you're so excited because they're profile, and then they show up and you realize, this is not what I thought it was going to be at all. Man. Sir. Well, you are thirsty in hell. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Thirsty for that video game. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I didn't care about girls back then. I just cared about more video games. Just thinking about that power-up. <laughs> just thinking about the power-ups. <laughs> what was your favorite position back then? 64? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, we can cut that out. Nope. Three hands on the <laughs> stick. That's my Joy-Con. You need three hands <laughs> to play an N64 controller. Yeah, we saw that meme, didn't we? Oh, yeah. Okay. So Doom 64, uh, Werewolf, what do you, what do you think? 
Agree, disagree. <sighs> That's one I don't know much about, unfortunately. I thought it was just going to be Doom for N64, so I didn't bother with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't much. have a PC, okay? Shut up. <laughs> no, literally, like, I thought it was Doom, like, because I'd played it on, I, I think I played it at a friend's house on PC, and then, or I had played it on Super Nintendo, so I was like, well, I played it on a couple of platforms, I don't want to play it again, so I didn't play it for N64. Yeah, well, that's that's exactly why I bought it, because I was like, oh, man, like, it's a better version. No. Wrong. That's brilliant. Wrong. That's, that, what was that Charlie Murphy? Yeah. Wrong. Right? wrong. Wrong. Or the wrong. Tigers in WoW. Wrong. <laughs> yeah. I, okay, but see, like, how great of a pick was that? Paul sh- bought the game because of two words. Doom 64. <laughs> Werewolf did not buy that game because of two words. <laughs> Doom 64. I swiped I left loved, I, so hard. <laughs> so hard, man. Uh, Man, I hit, okay. I practically hit super like. All right, <laughs> I don't get that reference. I don't know super like. <laughs> I'm I'm very single. We'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> what up? Okay, so uh, Jake, what do you uh, got so first with Doom sixty four? I'm actually not a fan of Doom. I actually don't like the series at all. Although the recent PC ones that came out, the reboots, those are okay. But the classic Doom, I never really cared for. And there was a series of games on the N64 that kind of tried to bring over some of the PC stuff. There was Duke Nukem and Hexen. And I think Hexen, 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 <laughs> that's a word, was the better of those type of games. That 2D sprites in a 3D world. Uh, I didn't care for Doom 64 at all. I did rent it. I played a little bit. I couldn't care for it at all. It is ugly. I'll give you that. I just also think it's a bad game. I, yeah, and I think Doom 64 was one of those games where I watched my cousins play it, and I loved watching them. Like, I could keep up with it if I was watching somebody else, but the first time I tried playing it, it was like I completely had forgotten what it was like to look at the game and could no longer keep up with it. So I, I played maybe 30 minutes of it and realized this is not for me to play, but it was entertaining to watch other people run and gun and blow up stuff. So I like it, and the visuals are okay, so long as I am not guiding the visuals. But that's that's just me. Uh, so, Jake, what do you have for us for this category? Um, ugly but great, 32 or 64-bit. Okay. Hear me out. Final Fantasy VII. I love this game. Oh, I think that's a great choice, yeah. Everybody loves Final Fantasy VII, or at least people who were in that generation love Final Fantasy VII. Uh, today it doesn't hold up for sure i mean the pre-render backgrounds and the in the cgi very pixelated very under res for today's time but even back in high school when i played this game originally the sprites in the overworld and the exploration areas like cloud looks like some kind of peanuts character mutated into 3d <laughs> polygon and there's no <laughs> textures anywhere to be found on any of the enemies practically it is you know one of the ugliest first-gen 3D games I've ever seen. Like, I'm talking Mario 64 makes Final Fantasy VII's Cloud look like fucking the Mona Lisa. This game is ugly. <laughs> the only reason people like this game is because of the FMV. The video is very cool, and I love the story. I love the music. And the gameplay is fun, but it's ugly as hell. No, I think I think that's that may be one of the best, because that, that's exactly right. And I think part of the reason... Personally, I was so let down by the graphics is because the commercials that came out back oh, in yeah. 97 for All the game pretty much only showed the yeah. FMV. That's the worst And thing. so you're hyped for this and you're like, oh my God, considering the last Final Fantasy was six, leaps and bounds. And you play it and you're, like you said, you're just playing to get to the next video. But somewhere, somewhere in there you fall in love with it. That's probably like the earliest version of, you know, people getting mad because of you know, not showing gameplay, you know, because that wasn't a practice back then, you know, everybody just played the game because there weren't cutscenes like that. And now it's like, those cutscenes look awesome, but let's see what the gameplay looks like, you know? So you have gameplay trailers besides, you know, the actual trailer. Well, yeah, it's a video, you ever been catfished by a video game? That's the idea, right? <laughs> those <laughs> to, to bring the whole dating thing around again. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. I think that's a great observation. And that is the cultural and historical significance of the final fantasy 7 commercials but if you go back and and still 
because I did this recently, if you YouTube the original Final Fantasy VII television commercials, I still get the same feels. Oh, yeah. The atmosphere is amazing. And it's that jump from SNES to PlayStation. You're just so hyped that the game is going to look amazing. And we all love Final Fantasy VI, I think, on this podcast. Oh, yeah. And just yeah. the sprite work in there is great. The the bosses look awesome. Its, graf- its graphics are amazing, but it's 2D. So you're just really hoping that the jump to 3D would be something amazing. And what they show you in the commercials looks great. But that's maybe, what, 10 minutes of FMB in the entire game? Yeah. That's true. Werewolf, yeah, what do you, what do you think? Final Fantasy VII. Okay, I'm probably in the minority here to where I'm not a huge fan of Final Fantasy VII. That's not to say I wasn't when it came out. Um, I played 200 hours probably in that first go-through where I did just about everything, I think, except killing Ruby Weapon. I even made a second Knights of the Round. So... <laughs> So I'm hearing you say you never beat Final Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. God. No, I I even made, like, I I enjoyed that game so much that time that I even made a friggin' uh, anime music video, an AMV, out of it back in the day with VHS. Like, that was time-consuming, first off. That was dedication. You're yeah. one of those. <laughs> I still, I, that's the only one I ever did. Well, no, that's not true. I did one with Resident Evil as well. But uh, um, I really enjoyed that game the first time. And then every time I've tried to play since, I can't put more than like three hours into it before I'm just bored and walk away. The game, like even when I tried to play it a second time back then, I was just like, nah, I can't. So t- to me, the game... It hit some notes the first time. Other than that, I can't agree with that it's an amazing game. I I feel like it's just been overhyped so much. And I, I think it's also the fact that it wasn't my first Final Fantasy. A lot of people who love it, it was their first Final Fantasy. And that's often the case. But I will agree, the game didn't look quite as good as I was hoping. But then I had spent all summer playing Suikoden and Wild Arms. And compared to Wild Arms, it was damn gorgeous. Wait, you mean it's not pronounced Sukoden? Crap. No, but yeah. <laughs> no, it, bullshit, it's pronounced that, Wild Arms. That, ju- <laughs> <laughs> that jump from sprites, it it made it with those backgrounds and everything. It Even though they weren't pretty polygons by any means for the characters, it was still an exciting change of presentation that let them tell the story in a different way. Um, and I, I feel like with Final Fantasy VII, they overcorrected the ship when they came out with Final Fantasy VIII. Um, with Seven, the backgrounds looked more lush and detailed than the characters, and then they came out with Eight, and the background was kind of put on the back burner so they could focus on the sprites and the overworld for the main characters. So at least they paid attention and corrected a lot of people's biggest complaints. But uh, yeah, I think that was a good good entry there. Um, Werewolf, what do you have for us in this category? 32 to 64-bit, uh, ugly but lovable. Bushido Blade. Yep. Oh, yeah. We could in? Bushido Blade. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not going to lie. I was kind of a Square fanboy back in the PlayStation era. So I, I was getting all their stuff. Like, it, I, I had bought Tobal Number 1. Nobody got Tobal Number 1. But I got Bushido Blade, and it's it's not what I expected it to be. And I had so much fun with it. Uh, my my friends and I, we would just sit there and play Bushido Blade for hours just because the combat, it was so intricate for as limited as it was. I mean, you injure your opponent, but if you got a killing stab, that was it. That that match was over with. There was no health bars. It was injury or death. And you could even mess up your opponent by like throwing sand in their fa- face like a dirty rapscallion and then taking advantage of it. It it was it was so much fun and even just unlocking it the the I think it had a couple of hidden characters. It was totally worth it. I just there was a lot of nuance to the gameplay that you don't see in a lot of fighting games. I, I'm sitting here, I'm trying to remember exactly which one Bushido Blade was. So it was it was a fighting game? Yeah, to a degree. It was a weapons fighting game. And I think you actually got to choose between a few weapons, too, if I remember correctly. 
Yeah, you're right. Well, uh, what the cover art looked like? I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember this one now. It's black and white with I think a big, a big red splatter on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a black and white pencil drawing or ink drawing of somebody, and then a big red blood splatter, and it said okay, Bushido yes. Blade. I'm also yeah. I Google imaged it, and you're yeah. I do remember now. I'm sorry. Thank you. But yeah, the the character models were not pretty. The the locations were not very pretty. It, they weren't even very detailed. It was like one of them was a big courtyard of cherry blossom trees, and it looked like they just copy pasted the same square of the arena over and over and over and over <laughs> along from one end to the other until they got to the opposite wall. There was a wonky camera in that game for sure. It used to zoom way out or like really get really close. Yeah, because it let you run away from the your opponent pretty far. Right. Which, of course, just made the characters even more unreadable. Yeah, yeah, more obscure. But yeah, I'll be honest, that sounds like a piece of crap. Uh, <laughs> aesthetically. Well done. That's, no, that's a good entry. Sick Jake, what do you think about that one? I love the game too. Um, I mean, we talked about this before the podcast. Procedure Blade is one of my one of my favorite games on the PlayStation because uh, it's not that many I I played on that. Um, the combat, the one on one combat, I just love how most weapon strikes will like outright kill your opponent if they connect. But you, there's all about the parry system, and that's pretty unique for its time. And there's not many games these days that have that same you know do or die combat system. But I just love it when you I think if you nick somebody's leg, they drop to the ground. But they weren't dead, so they still kept fighting while they're on the floor. I thought it was hilarious. I love that. Yeah, game. they'll they'll like drag one leg while like trying to walk <laughs> with the other leg with this horrible limp and <laughs> It's it's great. It's like oh, the yeah. Monty or... Python Black Knight fight, right? Like Yeah, just... you break their arm and it just falls <laughs> limp. They should have made the, the Black Knight like an unlockable character. Oh no, <laughs> your polygon's off. It's great. I love it. Yeah. Um <laughs> God. The backgrounds, I agree, are bad, but there was a style to it, though, like the, the bamboo forest, the cherry blossoms. It kind of it felt like that martial arts, you know, trope that's set up in a, a deserted field, a courtyard that's been cleared away, two warriors at battle. It had the style, but yeah, you're right. It did not have the graphic power and the textures to back it no. up. And then in the background, you see just the opening scene from Ninja Gaiden taking place. <laughs> <laughs> As long as that uh, music from Ninja Gaiden's playing, I'm down for it. Oh, I love that game. <laughs> uh, okay. So, Paul, what was your... No, you, you got us at the beginning. Sorry. I that got awesome you. Castlevania joke, yes. <laughs> and the wolf got us with Bushido Blade. Uh, Jake, what do you got? <laughs> we already went. Final Fantasy VII, man. Oh, that's right. That's how forgettable of a game that is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Damn. Bum, 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 bum. I know. I'm just I'm I'm drinking drinking my haterade tonight. I'm playing, <laughs> no, I, the reason I'm stalling is because I've got so many honorable mentions for this category for 32 to 64. Ultimately, I've settled on one, but Metal Gear Solid has not aged well. Uh, this is not my. These are my my honorable mentions. Such a great game, full of story and a lot of amazing twists and turns. But even playing that when it came out, the graphics took me out of it. Um, Mortal Kombat Mythology, Sub-Zero. The fighting in that, I don't know if you guys ever played that. The graphics were bad. The fighting style was decent, but the platforming was abysmal. But it was still oddly charming because it's Sub-Zero in an open world type setting. But ultimately, I think I have to settle for ugly, but with a lot of heart, Nintendo 64's GoldenEye. <laughs> I, it was going to be that or Superman 64, and ultimately, I just don't care enough about Superman 64, so GoldenEye, <laughs> right? Because I, I love that game. Um, I don't know how much of the actual game or campaign I ever played through. I know I've watched it wire to wire with my older brother, but the four-person you know, challenge mode was my entire experience pretty much with the 64 like that and Mario 64 and not much else. That's all but, you needed really. Yeah. Well, but I mean, even if you guys ever played like the giant head hack or, you know, <laughs> code for, for golden eye, that mode. game was so yes, DK mode. So incredibly ugly, but so much fun. And it, for me, it was one of the first 
multiplayer, you know, games like that. But uh, what do you guys think about GoldenEye? Paul, let's start with you. Nah, you summed it up. I really can't add to it because it's just... I want to say I loved it when it first came out, but it seemed like for graphics wise, but I think it was more just how you could shoot people in the crotch and they grab their crotch and then fall over dead, you know, or, and it, and it would tell you like, <laughs> to give you the, uh, the tally of head shots, arm shots, leg shots, torso, other, and you know, other was always the crotch shot. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, the graphics, as much as I wanted to admit, I thought they were amazing. I think it was more the gameplay itself so and i mean slappers only right <laughs> i'm still still playing that from an unfinished game that we we started back then <laughs> that's impossible uh where what do you think about goldeneye uh yeah i it didn't have a whole lot of texturing i, I think the majority of the uh the texture quality went to the characters faces but not their models so <laughs> The game itself, though, was an absolute blast. It it wasn't a whole lot to look at, which is probably for the best because it I think it helped it run a little smoother. There were a lot of N64 first person games that made me gave me headaches or made me dizzy, something like that. Man, I spent so many hours in that game with friends after school. We'd just go to somebody's house and play for like two, three hours that day and then do it all over again the next day. It was crazy. Well, and it was just good enough of a game to make you want to hate your friends. Oh yeah. But only for a short for a short amount of time cuz like you said the next day you were fine. Or if you were mad at somebody, you were only mad until you shot them in the crotch and then you were square. That that and Mario Kart 64 were games that end your friendship for the day. Yep. And but it's fine tomorrow. Yeah, and then you <laughs> start it all over again with the next match. <laughs> yeah. We should we should set up a a multi-person uh tournament or like cast of uh, if we can figure out a way to do that, of either like Mario Kart or Goldeneye, I think would be a blast. There's a PC version, I think, actually, of Goldeneye. Isn't it awful? I thought it I was, thought awful. was okay. Just like the uh, original. <laughs> yeah, <let's... laughs> okay, cool. Sick Jake, yeah, what, what's your take on Goldeneye? Uh, Wolf said I pretty much nailed it in the head with the, the low character uh, polys, or low polys on the character models. It, the triangle shaped heads. It reminds me of that music video, Dire Straits, Money for Nothing, where it's just <laughs> abysmally low polygon models. And it's just terrible. Plus, it's the N64. And hey, I love the system. I love Nintendo, but they had the fog problem, like the jungle level and, and the Russian level. It just, the design to get around the graphic failures, they brought in more fog, just more fog. And they do that in all these games. And it just does not work for the game at all. But it's a fun game. I used to play multiplayer like everybody else. Uh, Proximity Mines is my favorite weapon. I love that. Yeah, I yes. love the game, and I love playing it. But you're right. It's it's ugly as dirt. Yeah. Do you know who I killed more with Proximity Mines than anybody else? Yourself. Yes, me. <laughs> I, my, my short-term memory, man. I, I, try, I tried to uh, lure people into it without setting it off myself and was very unsuccessful. Sure. When, uh, to, the, to the point of the, the fog... And to kind of, again, put this all in the, the same packaging as the Tinder and the dating things. They do the same thing in nightclubs, you know? Oh. Uh, let's just dim the lights a little bit and put in some more fog. It'll be fine. <laughs> so we've all fallen victim to that. It's, it's okay. All right. So on to the other side of that coin. Let's now uh, examine the beautiful games that are completely without any other merits. Uh, next time... Well, maybe not next time, but in the upcoming episodes on Press B to Cancel. Uh, let's go around and restate our names, uh, us group of Rapscallions, and tell everybody where they can find us. Uh, Jake, you want to start us off? Sure. I'm Sick Jake. You can find me on Twitch and Twitter, and I guess here. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Polsh? Uh, you can find me here, most of all, and I also stream very sparingly on Twitch as well under Palsh109, P-A-L-S-H-109. Okay, very good. And Werewolf? You can find me streaming on Twitch or here or occasionally posting on Twitter at Werewolf, W-A-R-E-W-U-L-F-F. -F. Awesome. And I am Guy Prime. You can find me here on Twitch under The Retro Therapy or on YouTube, Instagram, or Twitter as The Retro Therapy. 
Everybody, until next time, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for watching this week's episode. Hit subscribe and that bell to be notified of all our future videos. For audio versions of our podcasts, please check out Apple or Google Podcasts, Spotify and Stitcher, or anywhere else you like to listen to your favorite shows. As well, feel free to visit our website at breastbeatedcancel.com.